Hello everyone, Robert Farrer here of Robert Farrer's Tea and Tara, and this week, a deck review. My flatmate has been talking about this tarot from Cat Black and US Game System. It's called the Touchstone Tarot, and I think it came out in something like 2018. Um, we'll have a look. Um, so let's just have a look at it. Good points and bad points. The box is very nice. It's, it's matte, and as you can see, it's embossed with gold. And that's really stylish and, and rather gorgeous. Um, the cards are, are partly nice, like the curate's egg, so they're very nicely embossed on the edges, but they're very highly glossy, so which I don't like. Um, so if you see that the box, I think is nicer than the cards. I think the cards are a bit wider than normal tarot size. Um, the stock is okay. Um, this is not the whole pack here. Quite thick cards. It comes with a book. This is a, a collage deck. And um, it's a collage of Renaissance or maybe Baroque paintings. And, okay, there's an introduction by Mary Kay Greer. Um, and then an introduction by the author. Basically, she defines this as a deck of portraits, a portrait deck. She says... A deck of portraits therefore made sense to me. It could be imbued with subtlety and nuance that could help the reader understand card meanings without having to memorise all of the RWS symbolism. So I'm, I'm going to try to be fair reviewing this deck. I mean, I have problems with it, but by fair, I mean this. I would like to ask, what is the aim of this deck? What's the goal? What's the idea? And is this a good idea? And how well is this idea executed? Now, by the terms of what the designer says, this is an RWS deck. It's a Rider Waite Smith family deck. And the idea is to is for this deck to be readable by people who use the, the RWS system. So that's what I do. I'm an RWS uh, tarot card reader. And so I'm going to, if, if you like, review this deck entirely in those terms, in RWS terms. What I want to say is that in some of these cards, the idea of using portraits from the Renaissance works very well. In other words, it has been possible for the designer to, to give us nice RWS images with these clearly very beautiful um, collages of Renaissance elements. So each, each of these cards... It's not a picture from the Renaissance, it's a collage of elements of pictures from the Renaissance. And in the little book here, um, the designer, which is nice, actually specifies which paintings were, were collaged to make which images. So here we have Eight of Pentacles, and we can look it up here, and we can see that the craftsman is a portrait of Niklaus Kratzer by hence the younger Holbein. And uh, the bearded face is another portrait. The book and the square come from another picture, and so on and so forth. So the design has been extremely upfront about all this and has taken great care and love putting these collages together. The four suits are colour coded, so we have always a splash of green in the background for coins. Splash of gold, I think, for swords. Um, gold or maybe grey. Always a splash of blue here um, for cups and so forth. Now, I'm going to be thinking positively. I'm going to show you some of the images that I think work extremely well. Here's five of swords. Now, I, I think if all the cards had been as successful as this, I would really be tempted to, to get hold of this deck and, and read with it. I'm not convinced by by the way it's formatted with the brown border and the, the sort of the, the pictures at an exhibition sort of uh, plaque underneath with the name. But, you know, that's always a that's always a, a big challenge for for tarot design, how you frame and frame and name your, your images. So, so let's not make too big a thing of that. 
Five of Swords, I think that's very successful. I think that's very successful. Um, here, are the, here are the good ones. And at the end of this, I will, I will give you um, a, a full flip through in the right order. And so you can get a, a, a real feeling. I think that one's very successful. A handsome man, a craftsman. So these are great. And these tend to be images where, you know, the figure in the RWS is important and is foregrounded. One figure is foregrounded and is looking at the viewer. I mean, that, these are lovely. And um, as I say, I would be very into a deck that was, you know, 78 cards as successful as these images. So I am not um, against the concept of this deck, at least it depends how hard and fast this concept is. Um, a nice bit of skin for the ladies and certain gentlemen there. You know, it's, it's, it's lovely to see these images. I, 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 like, I like that one, even though it's not terribly hanged manny. I mean, it should be like that really, shouldn't it? I like that one. Very, very good. Very, very nice. Now, I also want to show you some images that I don't think um, are, are particularly good. And, and I'll, I'll, talk, I'll say why and what, what my objections are. Now, in this one, you have the Six of Swords, which is actually, I think we would all agree, it, 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 the meaning of this card is really fleeing, escaping. So you want to see, really, frankly, you want to see characters, well, with their backs turned to the viewer, departing. And this is an image of arrival because it's all about faces. So in these cards I'm going to show you, I think the concept is fighting the RWS. That, according to the book, is, is Erasmus, and he's on, on the Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups, very much, you know, a full belly card, um, I'm not quite sure whether this serious, intellectual, rather ascetic man is the right, is the best face. That's a mild objection. Let me show you some other ones. Here we have um, Ace of Cups. Again, that is a, a, a departing figure in the RWS. And I think, I think the artist, the design here is, is really directly opposed to the RWS system. So I think that's, I think that's a mistake. And I think that's a weakness of the concept here. Ten of Wands. I'm not quite convinced this lady is holding the ten sticks and it doesn't really seem to be a problem to her. Eight of Wands, and let me, I'll show you Eight of Wands and Four of Wands here. Um, my question is, why is there a portrait here? And could not the design concept have been a little, a little more, um, uh, a little looser just to allow for a little bit of variation? Because, you know, if that had been a landscape and we had had those eight battens flying through the air, it would have been a great image. But but we have a portrait flown in because it's a portrait deck. And um, I would not particularly like to be reading tarot cards and, and be disturbed by basically unnecessary portraits. And this is another example of where I think the design is fighting the RWS. We got four of wands, so we got actually a four of wands image, like in mini version, just squashed to the edge of the card, and a portrait. It's it's a Rubens, isn't it? And it's a lady called Isabella Brandt, with her cat, in the foreground, who, you know, if she embodies the energy of the four of wands, um, I would be interested to know. I mean, let me know in the comments if I'm being really unfair about this. If this deck is is much more subtle and complex than I'd imagined. And here's another example of maybe this not quite so disturbing, but the the RWS image is relegated to the background, the image of the trumpet and, and the resurrection. And we have a portrait in the foreground, not an irrelevant portrait in that case, but nevertheless, I think we have the, the card has been shoved into the background. I also want to show you some interesting moments in this deck. There's, there's, there's a moment in the deck where I think the designer relaxes her, her iron grip on the, on, the, on the design concept. 
here we have eight of swords so so the portrait has has a blindfold on it here this is not really a portrait it's it's a nice collaged redo of a Pamela image and similarly there ten of swords I mean that's not a portrait that is a collage of the ten of swords so I think there is a little bit of, of inconsistency here and um, when I do a flip through I will I will tell you what I think about the court cards which I think which I think are perhaps the most problematic part of this deck. Okay, okay, so here's a flip through. We have the designer's card, the tarot card, touchstone tarot. We have um, the happy squirrel card. I don't know what happy squirrel cards really are. Maybe I haven't been watching enough YouTube. <laughs> I hope you don't think this is too judgmental. I'm interested to know how many of these I, I actually think are successful. So I'm actually going to do a kind of like sheep on the left, goats on the right situation. I think that's, I would say yes to that. Um, yes. Yes. Major Arcana, not bad. I don't like that, but yes. Um, yes. Yes. Maybe all the Major Arcana are okay. I think there's a couple that annoy me. I'm in a, I'm feeling slightly grouchy at the moment, but I think that's okay to do reviews when you're grouchy. Some of these are great. That's that's great, very successful. I think that's kind of a maybe, but I I like it because it's a, a male nude. Death. I don't really like that one. I, I think it's sort of really over collaged, and I I think that okay, it is a woman pouring liquid from one vessel into another but it feels a long way away from from traditional tarot imagery and, and this is a, a pack of tarot cards after all I think that's fine that's fine that's very good and yeah that's yeah I think that's that's basically fine that's quite creative it's quite nice there's she seems to be holding a crab very good. I, as I said, I don't quite, I don't quite buy into that one, and that's a truly lovely world card. You don't often see a, a male world card, even though the very oldest tarot packs seem to have had male world cards because it seems to have been um, originally Christ ascend, ascending to heaven there. Um, so I mean, doing very well so far. There's only really two of the major arcana that. I don't think work. Um, I think if you want to have angels in the aces, that's fine. I mean, I get portrait overload in this deck, which seems a bit unfair. That's a yes, by the way, considering this is conceptually a portrait deck, but I'm not quite sure whether it is entirely a portrait deck and whether it should have been entirely a portrait deck. That's a no. Yes, very nice. Yes, very nice. Yes, very nice. That's a no. Um, I think that's fine. I, I would comment on that, though, that this, apparently, according to the book, is is Jane Seymour, one of Henry VIII's wives, and she's representing the Nine of Batons, which is traditionally being in a position of, of strength. And I would say, frankly, if you're Henry VIII's wife, you're not in a very strong position. Um, but I guess she, at least she wasn't decapitated. Um uh, I, I think that is not really um, a successful RWS image. So I'm, I'm critiquing this on the terms that I found in the designer's statement here. Um, Ace of Cups, another angel. Yes, two of cups, very nice. Three of cups, very nice. Four of cups, very nice. Mr. Grumpy there. Five of cups, lovely. Six of Cups, lovely. Um, that, that for me is one portrait too many again. He's facing in the wrong direction, as I say. Um, I think yeah, you could have that, I suppose. I think it's the wrong face, and that's very nice. The Swords. A very nice angel with a tiger. Great, great. 
Um, I can't get into that one. I, again, I, I think it's okay, but I, I question whether this deck is, is coherent. You know, in this one, the artist has collaged in eyes from a different painting. I think it's the eyes of Caravaggio's Medusa. Eyes, Caravaggio, Medusa. Whereas the woman is a portrait of an unknown woman by Hans Holbein the Younger. So, so the artist has collaged in like crazy, you know, killer eyes into this portrait, which is fine. I think would be fine if you were doing a surrealist deck. If you wanted that kind of um, crazy Salvador Dali mad feeling. But that's not what the rest of the deck really is. And I, I mean, I find it slightly comical, which is, again, not a bad thing. I find it dreamlike and slightly horrific. Um, and I, I don't think it fits with the rest of the deck. And I also, I don't think it's, I think it's a pity, you know, that you don't have the bleeding heart. Um, so that's, that's with the goats. That's great. Not strictly speaking a portrait either. That's more, that's one of her more collagey ones. That I think is one of the best ones. I would say no. Very good. Nice. And these I think are good. And the last suit, again, we see the nice color coding here. There's a lot of green in the, in the pentacles images. An angel for the ace. The, the two, it, it's a bit sedate for a two of coins, but you do have you do, you do have an RWS image quite central there, so fine. Three of coins, the craftsman, great. Four of coins, uh, maybe, but let's be generous and say yes. Five of coins again, maybe, but let's be generous. Six of coins, fine. Seven of coins, great. Eight of coins, great. Nine of coins, pretty good. Ten of coins, pretty good. Okay, I'm going to take a pause and then I'm going to tell you what I think of the court cards. Okay, so here we are. And um, as I say, Vigazagd, the, the four families have some colour coding. So for the ones, we have a lot of splashes of red material. For the cups, we have splashes of blue. For the swords, we have... Well, I don't quite know what the artist the artist will tell us, but I guess she's splashing in sort of browns there. And for the, the pentacles, we have a lovely green. Now, you could say that um, this is where the, the heart of this deck is. Um, it's a portrait tarot, and the court cards are very much portraits. And maybe this is really just a matter of taste. I'm very fussy with the court cards um, because I think that they are they require quite a lot of of knowledge and skill to really read them to make them sing. And I can't help noticing that with these court cards that the project has once again drifted quite far away from the RWS. I think in a sense they're fine as a project, that they're, they're, they're nice collages and it's all done with great love and care. But in terms of, what's the word? In terms of reinventing the RWS and giving us a new, a new vision of the RWS, I don't think they're successful. So let me just show you what I mean here. We have the page of wands. Okay, generally speaking, I, I'm i gonna question, well, there's no never a problem with, with the Queens, but you know, one of the questions of the tarot, if you don't actually start using princesses or, or female knights or female pages, is how are these three uh, um, ranks distinguished? Now, Pamela distinguished the three, the three male figures very clearly. She made the pages young as pages were. I mean, pages, uh, the actual definition of a page is really a prepubescent boy because they looked after ladies, as I've said in my other videos. And the knight was distinguished by being on a horse. Crowley thought that knights were actually more powerful than kings, and that's arguable. I mean, knights were, you know, these, they were like Terminator figures riding around the, 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 the countryside of the Middle Ages 
on these huge horses with weapons and armor and, and no one. They were like tanks. People couldn't, you know, uh, defend themselves against a knight. And, and so they were extremely powerful creatures. And sometimes they were more powerful than kings, but they were on horses. They were they were they had this technology. They had this source of power between their legs, which is obviously a sexual symbol. Um, and it says something about what sort of energy they represent. So I think if you take the horses away, uh, you, you're kind of drifting a bit. And again, what's left what's left for the kings to, to define them as different kind of people from these three? So on the whole, I think that the pages in this deck um, are a bit old and the knights are lacking horses. That's my first comment. Um, the second comment is how much tarot imagery can we see there so Pamela as you know has got elemental and astrological imagery in her court cards in the in the suit of wands she's got a lot of fiery imagery she's got fiery colors and she's got salamanders and leos and sunflowers and so forth these are not really in evidence here I mean that's Christopher Marlowe which I think is a nice choice Christopher Marlowe was the person who said he is a fool that loves not tobacco and young boys, or at least his enemies said that he had said that. But he obviously was uh, a bit of a loose cannon, a bit of a, a, a priapic figure. And so that is great for the Knight of Wands. But as I say, I, I would need more, more elemental or astrological symbolism for this to work. She's got her cat, which is a, a Pamela thing, and I and actually she does have some lions there, great. Uh, but she doesn't have a sunflower. Fine. I think I, I'm not sure that's a terrific Queen of Wands. Who are, for me is a bit more of a provocative, um, pro provocatively female, provocatively up and run sexual creature. But that's fine. That's 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 the designer's choice. Um, and I quite like. This guy, he looks a bit like the crazy Henry VIII. I think he's got a, a red beard. He's probably quite fiery. He's probably a bit of an egomaniac. Um, and, you know, we do have the red material. But, hmm, actually, I think we've got a, a salamander there. And I'm, 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 looking, I'm looking to see if there's any hidden symbols in, in the tapestries. But if, they're, if they are there, they're, they're very hidden, I have to say. Um, let's look at the cups. Page of cups. He's got his fish in the cup that we know and love. Um, but that I don't see really any water in that image. The knight, the knight actually has more air symbolism in him than, than any of the swords cups. I think that's beautiful, but again... Um, uh, it doesn't help me particularly as a reader. I don't think it's easy to read. Um, Queen of Cups has a bit of water visible through the window. But she seems to be a bit of a bon viveur. It seems to be a bit about, about food for her. I'm not quite sure whether food corresponds to the element of, of water. And yeah, the King of Cups, this was actually when I first flipped through this deck. This was when I began to hear alarm bells ringing. I thought, oh, there is... This designer is not on the same page as me at all. I, I just, astrologically and elementally, I just don't see that as the King of Cups. It, it, it looks like another bon viveur figure, conceivably a King of Pentacles or a Nine of Cups. Same with swords. I think, you know, there's a great, terrific, there's a, there is a butterfly there in the background, but these are very, very hidden things. Um, the Knight of Swords, th there's another butterfly. Okay, there. But the, these are, mm, I mean, it's it's sort of, for me, it's it's too little too late. Queen of Swords, if there's, if there's elemental and astrological correspondences there, I can't see them. And, and yeah, King of Swords, I, I think there's a butterfly there as well. So... Page of coins, nice green tablecloth, knight of coins. There is, you know, there is vegetation in the tapestry and there is a world, I suppose, if you want to relate that to the element of earth. 
Um, and there that the Queen of Coins is having a nice dinner. And the King of Coins, according to the handbook, is is having a a seafood dinner, which again is is surprising elemental imagery. Yeah, I also want to say that I I, I read in the book that the the King of Swords has has lions there on his throne, which is Leo, and and I find that confusing. So, for me, I I don't like the court cards. I mean, if you leave the court, card out, court cards out of the equation, I guess they're controversial. They could work for you. Let's see, that's the, the, the pile of cards that I think work very well here, and the pile of cards that I don't think work very well here. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of 78. I mean, that's enough for me to not read with this deck. But what I want to say is that I, 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 don't want to, I don't want to assassinate the deck. I, I think it's a, a nice project. But I actually think that, you know, if it's going to be released by US games systems and, and, and sold across the globe, it could have been edited and it could have been improved. I think if you were just starting out with Tara, this would, um, this would be quite confusing. I think it might not help you to learn the images um, because, as I say, in, in certain of the cards, the emphasis is a, a bit questionable. So um, that's my review of the Touchstone Tarot. Um, stay well. And uh, if that's what you're looking for, um, enjoy. OK, thanks. Bye.